Today, I'm gonna to show you the eight-in-one queen-rearing long hive. Hi, I'm Lawrence Edison, Black Mountain Honey. Welcome to another episode of No Nonsense Beekeeping. Thanks again so much to the guys down at Hide Hives. They have given me this long hive, and this isn't any old long hive. This is an eight-in-one nucleus queen-rearing long hive. So in this video, I'm gonna review this product. I'll talk to you about all of the different features of the product, what it's made of, how it comes, how I'm gonna use it, the functionality, absolutely everything, top to bottom review of this eight in one nucleus queen rearing long hive. So I am really excited by this. You know me, I love to get a new beekeeping toy and this is the latest one that I've got from the guys down at Hide Hives. It is slightly longer than a normal long hive and it's used for queen rearing purposes but it's got lots of flexibility built into it. So I'm gonna jump straight into the review. We'll go from top to bottom, talk about all the features, and I'll let you know what I think of this product. So as per the normal long hive, it comes with a phenolic ply roof. So it's film back, should last for years and years and years without delaminating, really nice design. And just look at it, like the whole thing does look fantastic. I love the look of long hives. I think they just look so much nicer than normal hives. And especially something like this, which is a queen rearing hive or somewhere to keep nukes. You don't really lose any functionality at all. And if anything, it's probably a little bit more practical, especially for overwintering eight nukes in one, doing your queen rearing, it's all in one place like that. Keeps it nicely off the floor. I can't wait to get this in use. The way that I'm gonna use it next season, I'm gonna fill it up with bees. I'm gonna keep on taking the queens out, loading them in with queen cells got a few different strategies that I might put into play in terms of building up the colonies, but I'll cover the functionality of that all later on within this video. So here's the roof, phenolic ply, really nice long roof. It's got that seam at the top there, perfectly watertight. I really do like the design of these roofs. It's, it's very nice indeed. Nine mil ply, I think that is, but it's completely waterproof. Really nice, good looking solid roof. Then other things to notice on the exterior is you've got your bee escapes there. So if you do get any stray bees in the roof area, you've got a little cone bee escape there for the bees to get out and they shouldn't get back in. And they are surprisingly effective. I, I, I'm amazed on my other long hive, which is, which is just over there, how effective they are. You do, you close the lid, there's loads of bees in the lid. You come back the next time and there's no bees in the lid. So they do work really well. And then the entrances, so the same as the long hive, you've got your entrances there with the standard entrance block, same on the other side. And then what makes this one different is you've got your little mini nuke entrances. So you've got one, two, three on this side, and then four, five, and six to make up a total of eight entrances. Now, just to take a step back from it as well, it's a little bit longer than the normal long hive, but not a huge amount. Comes with its own stand, and this version here I've got this is made in top quality pine. So really nice, good quality pine. If I had to have a choice, whether it was pine or cedar, would have probably gone with cedar. Uh, and if I'm recommending one to you, I, I would recommend to go with cedar. I do think it lasts a little bit longer than pine, but I'm not gonna moan, obviously as a, as a free product, I'm over the moon with this one. But this is 100% pine. And as you can see, it, it's a top quality pine, like hardly any knots in it at all. If any knots really on the actual hive, couple on the stand and the stand is included, really good looking stand. I do love the stand on these hide hives. They're designed so nicely and the splayed legs just add a lot of appeal. So then other external features, you've got your pull out varroa trays. If you're doing any varroa monitoring or you just want a solid board at the bottom over winter, you can keep those in all the time or you can take them out all the time, entirely up to you. Really nice design though. They made a phenolic ply as well, but they should last for years and years. Right, so let's get into the hive then and have a look inside because that is where all the fun happens in this hive. It's built so well inside. And as soon as I got it here, I started having a play around with it with Dean. And I, I thought at first it was gonna be eight times three frame nukes. But in fact, it's actually eight times five frame nukes. So this one's on a national format. So I've got enough space for eight pretty much full size nukes in here. Like when they condense down over winter, five or six frames doesn't make a huge amount of difference. And for queen rearing, once you've built them up to that strength, doesn't make a massive amount of difference either. If anything, the extra couple of frames, once you've built them up, 
I find does help to get the queens laying a little bit quicker. Let's look inside the long hive though and see what the fuss is about on the inside. So as with all the long hives, you get these gas powered struts and they just make life so easy. Really easy to lift up, nice slow closing mechanism so it doesn't slam down. It's gonna prolong the life of the hive. It just makes it really easy to use as well. Then we move on to where the fun happens and you get eight separate crown boards. Each one of the crown boards is a nice clear perspex crown board. And then it's got a central hole that you can use for varroa treatments. You can use it for feeding syrup. You can use it for feeding fondant, really multi-purpose good crown boards. Then as you start to take away those crown boards there, so you can see I've taken it away on this side over here and I've taken it away on this side over here. You can see it's a really, really good seal. And that's what's important here. You have a good seal around the edge. And that's important on a, a queen rearing nuke or a queen castle or whatever you want to call it. You don't want any chance that the bees can come from one side. Maybe you've got bees in this side over here. Over here, you want a really good top quality seal. And that's what this hive here gives you. It gives you a really good top quality seal. So when you take all the crown boards out like that, I thought, great, this is really good. You get lots of space. I'm going to be able to create amazing colonies in there. Nice big five frame splits. And I hadn't realized what you could do. And this just makes it so much easier. Now, these dividers here, they're completely removable. And I just think, wow, that makes everything so much easier. Because what I can do is I can overwinter this as a single colony if I want, and then build it up and then split it off into eight. I can overwinter it as kind of like two or three colonies. However I want to do it, I've got the flexibility to move things around. If one of them is getting too big and I've not got a queen to put into it, I can do some sort of merge and we'll cover emerging colonies in long hives in a future video. But I just thought that was really, really nice design. And I'm so glad that they haven't fixed those impermanently and they give you the flexibility to move things around. So these dividers here, they're made out of pine as well. Good quality pine there, not a single knot in sight. And then you've just got nice plywood in the middle. Good quality 12 millimeter plywood. I will treat that plywood edge there. I'll get a bit of beeswax and I'll get a bit of oil and I'll just make up a little mix just to seal that from any moisture ingress. But really nice quality dividers and a really nice quality fit as well. You can just see everything fits together so nicely on these hives. Get that into focus for you there. You can see it goes right up to the edge, right up to the edge again. Everything is a very tight fit, really good workmanship. So there you go, there's a little bit of an overview in terms of what the queen rearing hive is all about. I'm gonna put this one to you straight away. I'm gonna get eight colonies in here, probably go over about two or three frames, newly mated queens, and I'm gonna let the colonies build up in here, try and get eight nukes through the winter. Obviously, I'm gonna do future videos about that. So if you're interested to see how I build up the colonies in here, please hit the subscribe button. We will do lots of videos on this queen rearing hive. We'll do some this year about stocking it, how to get them through the winter, and then we'll do plenty of videos next year about how we're gonna rear queens in this hive. Now, this hive here is not cheap. It's about 550 pounds, but we have managed to negotiate with the guys down at Hyde Hives a discount code for anybody watching our videos. So I'll pop the discount code up into the comment section. It's no nonsense beekeeping with a couple of hyphens in there as well, and that will get you 10% off any hives across the whole of the Hyde Hive store. So once you take that discount into account, you're talking around 500 pounds. And again, you might think, well, 500 pounds, that is a lot of money for a hive. But I think that's a relative bargain when you come to think about a couple of things. So the first one, okay, is subjective, but oh my God, how nice does it look? It's a pleasure to use and put something like that in your apiary, in your garden. It's gonna get a lot of attention and it's just really, really nice. But the bigger one than that is that you've got eight nukes here. So if you were to go to any other manufacturer and say, I want eight wooden nukes, regardless of whether it's pine or cedar, and the cedar hive actually costs only a little bit more than the pine hive here. Once you actually work this out for these ones here, you're not paying that much for it at all. You're paying around 60 pounds per nuke for each one of the nukes in this colony here, there or thereabouts. And I know you could go and you could get poly nukes, and I, and I do like poly nukes, I use poly nukes a lot. But to have something that looks as nice as this for the price of say 60 pounds per nuke, I really don't think that overall asking price for this is too far out at all. Actually, I think it's probably a bit of a bargain. 
What I do love about this queen rearing nuke though is the flexibility that it gives you with those removable dividers. That is gonna make my life so, so easy when it comes to next year. Because let's say for instance, I put eight queens in here, eight colonies, and we get five of them through the winter. And I think they will overwinter really, really well in here, but you do get losses. Say you get five losses. All I have to do then is kind of look where the losses are. I'll take out the divider in April, maybe put a feeder on, maybe build that colony out to fill the void. And then I can make splits directly in the unit here. So then all I need to do is go and put the divider back down in. Half of that split is therefore queenless. They'll raise queen cells. I can knock them down, add a mated queen or add a queen cell, and I'm good to go again. If the dividers weren't movable like that, or you couldn't take them out, I'd have to start doing splits and the bees would get really, really disorientated quite quick. And it means you have to make splits very early in the year to try and backfill the losses. So I love the fact that they've built in that flexibility into this design. I think it's gonna be really, really good. What I am gonna do on this though, is I'm gonna put some sort of markings around the entrances because I just think with queen castles like this and queen rearing hives, I have had issues in the past where you'll get reasonable mating success, but you don't get 100% mating success because you're asking the queens to go out and fly and get mated and come back to one hive and they can get confused, go back into the wrong entrances and then they get killed. So I'm gonna do my very best to try and avoid that happening. And I'll probably do that by putting some form of stencil on each of the hive entrances, just a black and white stencil, something that they can see, a really obvious shape or pattern or something like that, just to help the queens get back to the correct entrance. Now, I don't wanna go into too much detail on this review here because the next video you're gonna see of this hive, I'm gonna go into lots of detail and actually have some bees. I'm gonna be stocking it, adding queens. You'll see the hive in action. And I think that's just the best way to get to grips and understand what this hive is all about. So if you're considering getting one of these hives, I definitely recommend it. They are top quality hives. You've got the discount code as well. That'll take 10% off any hives on the Hide Hives website. And even better than that, the guys have said that they're gonna give me some different hives later on in the year. Maybe a Layens hive, maybe a top bar hive, maybe do some observations hives as well. We're gonna have plenty of these videos going forward because people do like watching them and they like to see different hives in action. So I hope you enjoyed that video. As always, please hit the subscribe button. Please hit the bell so you're notified of every video and I'll see you next time.